Hello everyone, welcome back. I've got in a new scope today from Swamp Fox. Okay. I paid for this, all right? Uh, so this thing better be good, okay? So I know a lot of other reviewers out there, they get stuff for free. I pay for my stuff. So if my stuff, if I'm not happy with my stuff, uh, I mean, I'm not happy. And uh, it, a lot of times it ends up going back, okay? Um, so I just want to put that out there. Okay? So this is the Swamp Fox Patriot. Uh, it is a 6 to 24 scope, and it has this, uh, what is it called, sharpshooter, sharpshooter mill grid. Okay? You can see them on the box there, okay? Um, so let's take a look at this. I did open this up last night uh, and took a quick look at it just so I know what's going on. I mean, basically, I, I, I couldn't wait. I needed to look at it. Um, so... What am I trying to get out of the scope? I, I bought this for a very specific reason. I'm trying to fill in a specific niche. So I've got this other scope here from Primary Arms. This is a 5 to 25. I've been working with this for about two months now. It's turned out to be a great scope, um, but it is heavy. Okay. So I've been this. I, I bought this for the purpose of going on an AR-10, but I've been testing it out on a 5.56 AR. You know, with 5.56 because it's cheaper. I've been putting in a 22 conversion bolt. So I've had a lot of trigger time on the scope, and now I'm ready to put this on the AR-10. Uh, but I found that I really like shooting at 500 yards uh, with a scope like this that has 25 magnification. And I said, hey, you know what? I'm going to miss this, and I need to get a I need to get a, another scope in that magnification range to get back on, you know to put on this AR so I can cheaply shoot at 500 yards, you know, and have the experience that I've been having uh, for the for the last two months with this, okay? So, the one issue that I've had with the scope, right, I, it, it is it is heavy, right? So, it between the scope and the mount, it adds two and a half pounds on top of the gun, which makes it really top heavy, okay? Um, so, if I was going to buy, since I'm buying a scope specifically for an AR-15 this time, not an AR-10, I said I, I need to get a lighter scope, okay? But, so, um, um, first, I mean, the first place I went to was, I went to back to uh, Primary Arms. I'm looking through what they offer. And, uh, you know, they definitely don't have anything lighter in the 5 to 25 range, right? Uh, and I said, okay, let's take a look at the, like, the 3 to 15, 4 to 16 range. And what I'm seeing is that the scopes that they have in that 16 power, 15 power magnification, they're not that much lighter. They're just a tiny bit lighter. So I'm like, that, that doesn't make sense. So I started looking around at, at other companies. I, I looked at Arkin. I looked at Discovery Op. I looked at a bunch more. Um, and now one of the criteria is I, need, I needed this to be lighter. I wanted to get like below two pounds, okay? Um, I needed it to be lighter, but it had to have a Christmas tree reticle because I have found that it is useful for shooting like 500 plus yards. Uh, it's very useful for like spot, you know, for self spotting. Uh, if you can spot the, the splashes, you can quickly move that dot and that's basically your new aiming point, okay? So it had to have a Christmas tree reticle. Um, I mean, I did find some scopes um, that uh, like Arkin, I think they had a light, a light version, but it didn't have the Christmas tree reticle that I wanted. So I think it was like the EP4 or something. Didn't have a Christmas tree. So I'm like, okay, that, that's a deal breaker. Okay. So I had almost given up. And then I came across this uh, swamp box. Um, and, in the, and there was two I was looking at. I was looking at this uh, 6 to 24, right? And I was also looking at, I think, the like 4 to 16 or something, or 4 to 15, something like that. Um, and what I found is that the, 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 whatever, 3 to 15 or whatever it is, uh, it was only one ounce lighter than this 6 to 24. So after kicking it over for about a week in my mind, I said, you know what? It, it's worth it's worth um, going with the extra one ounce uh, to get more magnification, okay? So that's that's what, because uh, that would bring me closer to this experience that I was having with that primary arms 5 to 25 with less weight. Now, there's some things that I was willing to compromise and some things I was not. Um like I, like I said, I, I needed to have a Christmas tree reticle. Um, I realized that in order to get to a lighter weight scope, uh, it would have to have a thinner tube. So that's a 30 millimeter versus the 34. Uh, and this has a 
50 millimeter objective lens versus 56. Okay, so there's less light coming in through the tube, and that's going to make a difference as the sun gets starts you know going down. And I do do a lot of shooting into the evening sometimes, so that's where one of the places I'm going to pay a price on this. Okay, and that's fine. Um, that's something you know I, I understood. Okay, now the other thing I was willing to compromise on was illumination. I knew that this scope did not have illumination. Um, the uh, illumin I mean, the illumination in this primary arm was five to twenty-five. What I found is that I was hardly ever using it uh, because the only time I needed to use it um, was if uh, the sun's kind of going down. And a lot of times, what I was finding is that the illumination, even in the darker setting, was was overwhelming the target. So even in low light conditions, I ended up working with just the etched reticle. So that's why I said, um, you know, illumination can go. Okay, not a problem with that. Um, so I, I thought I had everything like like zipped up. I'm like, okay, this is going to be perfect. Um, the one thing that I did not read or, or I failed to come across clearly to me when I was looking at the description of this uh, was that this does not have a zero stop, okay? And I, I think that's going to be a deal breaker because the way we use these type of scopes, right, that have these that have these high magnifications, 24, 25, um, when you we we end up having to dial in, right? Because if you're just using the the the, the, the reticle, right, as 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 a hold. Uh, as you get out to like 800 yards and you got to go down that Christmas tree because you've zoomed up the bottom of the the bottom half of that Christmas tree reticle falls out of your field of view okay so what you end up doing is you have to dial up um, so that so that you know now now you you um, you know instead of like looking at the bottom of the glass you're now looking at the center of the glass and now if, if you miss, you can spot the splashes in the grid below, okay? So, so that's kind of like a must when you're at these high power magnifications, right? Like you know, around that 25 power, you have to dial up. Now, what is critical for dialing up is having a zero stop because one of the things that as you dial up, right? Because this is, this, I've, I zeroed it in at 50 yards. I can dial up. So I know, let's say at 500 yards, I'm at three mils. If I'm shooting, let's say... Um, uh, uh, 800 yards, uh, I might be, let's say, at 10 mils, okay? So you dial up to 10, okay? And now, basically, I can just bring it all the way back down to zero, all right? And now, if I'm going to shoot, let's say, 400 yards, I dial up to 2 mils, so, and then I go back to zero. So I, every time I'm used to, I'm done with this, I, like, I, you know, I, I automatically dial up. A couple of times, I forgot to do this, and basically, I, I missed target because I was shooting over it so that's one of the things that you have to ingrain after you're done shooting you come up here dial down okay so so that's how you kind of have to use a, a high power scope right that goes that's like with a magnification is going over 20 okay so this scope the Swamp Fox Patriot does not have that uh, that zero stop okay now it does have a resettable turret where you use the coin here to unscrew this and put it down where you need it so that so that you you have a, a, a point to come back to right but the problem is that as you're spinning around and maybe sometimes you because this only has five mils all the way around or six mils all the way around so as you go you go past it right uh and you try to come back down it's very easy to lose your spot and you're like wait a second am i at zero now or does that, you know so it's just going to get confusing okay i can't see this not getting confusing um so now i'm aware that this is an earlier cheaper version i know that swamp fox has the, the kentucky out there i know that they have the the warhawk but i needed a lighter scope okay that was like the number one criteria that i was looking for here okay uh, so those other ones did not, you know, they didn't fit that weight criteria. Let's, let's weigh this thing real quick. Just a teeny tiny bit. Okay, one pound, nine ounces. I'm going to put the uh, mount in there. The mount that I'm going to be using, which is the same mount I have on that primary arms over there, is this... Uh, um, 
uh, Discovery Opt. It's only thirty-five dollars. It's a twenty MOA mount. So that's the. I, I'm really happy with that. I was going to use the same thing on this. So with the mount, I am at one pound fourteen ounces. Okay. So I'm I'm just shy of two pounds. So th this is this is acceptable. The weight is acceptable. Um, so like I'm really disappointed that this thing doesn't have that that uh, that zero stop because I feel that for the type of work that that you're gonna do with this type of scope where you have to dial up there's there's um, I mean I, I mean you're gonna you're gonna get confused you're gonna be like wait a second am I at zero or do I need to go around another turn uh, now the fact that there's a 20 MOA mount I don't know if I'm gonna be all the way at the bottom because the question is like am I gonna be able to get low enough so that I can't go another full spin because that would solve the problem. And the answer to that might be if I had, if I could find, let's say a 25 MOA mount or a 30 MOA mount. I know they make them, but I'm not gonna pay $200 for a freaking mount to go on a, you know, a $300 scope, okay? Um, so that's so that's one of the things, it's like, uh, you yeah, know, I mean, that does just doesn't make sense. Uh, so so the, this 20 MOA mount from Discovery Op, $35, this is what matches up to this. Um, so this is how this is either going to work or it's not going to work. Uh, and if it doesn't work, it's going back in the box and it's going back where it came from. Uh, you know, this is obviously an honest review, guys. I don't do, look at my channel. I don't do affiliations. I don't do promotions. I don't do any of that stuff. Nobody gives me anything. I pay for everything. So if it's not good, it's going back. Okay. That's just, I got to go through the trouble of getting this thing back. Um, so I think that that's going to be the sticking point. The fact that this uh, doesn't have that zero stop and for the way that this needs to be used right where you're dialing constantly dialing up dialing down dialing up dialing down you're dialing up dialing down it, it i don't think it's workable without the zero stop okay um so that said uh let's talk about the scope a little bit more so let's talk about these caps that they gave us here uh there are especially the back one a little bit on the loose side the primary arms are a little bit tighter they're basically the same same quality it's just you know I mean, it just could be uh how these particular ones uh came out you know uh, but uh if you notice over here on the primary one ones as far as, as far as i can tell they're pretty much the same thing i put electric tape over the top i, I just use these as dust covers because a lot of times if i'm going through the woods and i got the rifle on my back i don't want this debris falling uh, into the into the lens if I don't pull electric tape over the top, a lot of times it'll hit something like a branch and it'll pop open. So that's why I've got these things electric tape down and then I just pull the whole thing off when I want to shoot it. Okay? So if I keep this scope, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to electric tape it, the two ends, so that it doesn't flip up. Okay. Um, right, let's take a look at some of the stuff that they gave us. See if they flipped up. See how, how these things just pop open? All right, so they gave us... I installed this last night. They gave us a throw lever, which is good because some companies don't give you one. It should. But uh, um, Swamp Fox gives us two. They give us a low one and a high one over here, uh, and that's really good. Okay, and you, you use an it slides in through the front, and then you use an Allen screw with a little spacer. Uh, first, you put in the spacer, then you put the little Loctite on the Allen screw, and you screw it down. Uh, for most people, you're going to want to use the long one. Uh, unless like you're really having issues with this thing snagging on things, you, you're gonna you're gonna want the long one. Um, with the long one, I mean it it feels just right, so you're not like really working too hard to crank this over. All right, so most people are gonna use the long one. Uh, the diopter in the back is, in my opinion, a little bit too loose. Okay, uh, especially for something that you're gonna set once and you're not gonna keep resetting. The diopter should have been a little bit tighter. Uh, and now I'm using I have lots of primary arm scopes, so I'm kind of using that as a base. Okay, so it's good that they give you extra throw levers over here. Primary arms only gives you one, but the diopter over here uh, is a little bit on the loose side. Now, the way you're going to focus the diopter is you focus it to the reticle. Uh, you, you point it at something featureless like the snow, and you're going to rotate it until the numbers in it, right, are are in focus. And then, and then that's it. You're done. You're never going to, unless somebody else shoots shoots. This, uh, the scope is never going to need to be adjusted. That's why the diopter should have been a little bit tighter. Okay, um, So, turrets. Uh, the turrets are a little bit softer compared to the primary arms. Uh, now, with the primary arms, I have a much bigger 
turret over here. So that gives me a lot more leverage. Okay. That gives me a lot more leverage. And what I've done here is I've capped the windage, right? I put a, a cap on the windage so that I can't accidentally turn that. So because I mean that I mean if this thing rubs on your clothing or on your jacket or something, they're gonna they're gonna spin out of place. Now if the top turn here catches something and, and spins out of place on your clothes, not a problem because you've got the resettable zero. Um, or, I'm sorry, you got that zero stop, and you're always going to bring this back to zero when you're, you know, before you start working with it, okay? With this, there's no turret cap, and there's no resettable zero. So now if, if, you, if this thing snags on your clothing or something, it's like you're just going to throw off your zero. And you can't come back to it. Um, and I already talked about the problem with it not having a, res a resettable zero, not a uh, yeah, or zero stop, a zero stop. This and it gets confusing. Uh, you got zero zero stop. You got resettable zero, and then you got cap turns. I mean, you know, um, so it, it, it has a resettable zero where you can remove the caps. Yeah, the way you remove it, freaking cold today. <laughs> you take a coin. You hold it down, you spin it, right? There's a little rubber on the inside. Uh, don't lose that. The first time I did it last night, I tried to do it with a penny, and this thing was, like, really tight. So I hold it, and I had to twist it with a corner, and then it just lifts up, and then you just, you know, after, you first you zero it in, and then after you zero it in, you lift this up. You do have to wiggle it in a little bit in place in order for it to find its spot. So you... And then it'll go all the way down. You need to practice with this before you put it before you zero the gun because what's going to happen is uh, there's a little bit of a learning curve with with getting the turret the, the the this turret on and off. And if you don't practice and you just go to zero the gun and then you go to set your the zero, you're going to throw off the zero and you're going to have to zero the gun again. Okay, so so get comfortable with taking the cap on and off and putting it back on. Um, so so that's how that works. It just it just screws off. It's actually a lot easier than the primary arms because with primary arms you gotta deal with these Allen screws. But I guess you kind of have to because they got the lock and turret on the inside. So maybe that's the reason why they have the much more complicated system with the Allen screws. This you just remove it with a coin. Um, but like I said, I I don't think that I'm gonna try it. But I don't think that this is gonna work out. Uh, not having that zero stop. Okay. So uh, so so the fact that the these turns move so easily compounds the problem, right? Because you're going to move this and it's like, you know, you can't just like, you know, because with, with this, I don't even need to look. There it is. I, I went to my zero. With this, I got to look at it. And sometimes, especially if the sun's coming in at you and, still, and you're, you're distracted, you know, you, you may not, you may not, uh, you may not do that. Um, so those are your turns. The parallax is uh, pretty nice. It feels just like the parallax in the primary arms. Uh, the one benefit of this one is that it, since it doesn't have the illumination on the side, uh, you're not going to, I mean, I'm not going to get confused between the illumination and the parallax. Because one of the things that I found with this primary arms, because I got the illumination on the outside of the parallax, a lot of times I go to grab one and I grab the other. Done that a number of times. Um, so, so it's actually a little bit more, it's, it, in some ways it's like, I really and don't use the illumination that much. Um, it's probably not necessary. Okay, so that that is definitely a willing compromise. I think this would have been a perfect scope um, if uh, if only had that that zero stop. Okay, uh, what else is there to say about this? Uh, so again, we're just doing initial impressions. And obviously, I have it mounted on the gun. Let's see what else they give us. They give us the two the two throw levers. They give us a a cloth. Oh, they give us a a sunshade that will go on the, on the front of the uh, of the scope, and they give us this uh, really cool star key, two different sizes. I don't know what the star key fits into because I don't see any star screws on this that I would be using it on. So I, obviously I'm going to use it on something else, but I I don't see how I would be using the this key that they gave us on on this scope. So I don't, don't know that. Uh, but in, in any case, I'm glad they gave it. it. It's nice. I mean, it says Swamp Fox on it. So it, it might just be it might just be that they're giving it to you as an advertisement. Um, so those are my initial impressions just out of the box. I think that the weight is really nice. At, uh, uh, two pounds, four, two pounds, no, one pound, four, 
one pound, 14 ounces, just under two pounds um, with the mount. And it's nice and light. Um, but, you know, we're going to see how it works not having a zero stop. Okay. So I plan to do lots of videos on this. A uh, couple of weeks of videos, maybe. This this scope here is going to go on the AR-10. So now we'll be able to, you know, to, 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 to finish, you know, basically. Because I, because I've, I haven't shot this with, with, with a 308. I've only been shooting this 5.56 and 223. So that's going to go to its final destination, which is going to be on the AR-10. And then we're going to see if this ends up being the scope that goes on there or staying on there or if it's just something that's uh, temporarily going to go on there. Okay. So drop some comments below. Let me know what you guys think. I hope this uh, video was useful. Uh, and like I said, I have a very different perspective when I'm like looking at these scopes because I'm paying for everything. Uh, and if I don't like it, it's going back where it came from. That's one of the reasons why I buy all my stuff from Optics Planet because, uh, and sometimes the descriptions on, on a lot of these products can be a little bit off. Like, like the fact that this didn't have a zero stop didn't stand out. Um, but, um, you know, so, so I, I like to buy things from places where I can easily return them, like no questions asked. You know, here's your money, go buy something else. Uh, now, one of the things that I am liking so far, just looking through the glass and look, I do like the reticle. Uh, it does have a very nice, this, uh, the sharpshooter mill grid. So it may not be a total bust for, for, for Swamp Fox because even if I end up not staying with this scope, I may end up getting another scope from Swamp Fox that has this uh, this radical. Okay, so it, so it may not be a total bust for them, um, you know, or it may just turn out that you know with that 20 MOA mount, um, this this scope is it, you know is workable without the zero stop turns. Uh, we'll see, we'll see. There'll be lots of videos on this. Okay, uh, and, you know we're gonna do some point of view shooting, all that good stuff that I've been doing for the last two months with this. All right, so thanks for watching. Drop some comments below, and talk to y'all soon. Got a shit ton of snow. <laughs> I got like a four, four and a half foot mound right there. That's all over the place here. Yeah.